I don't think so, I say. You know, if you know, and I meant it. <laughs> Not playing. Game over. No. What is your problem? I don't want to hurt you. You want to hurt me? Yeah. Oh, do you know where you're going to hurt me? Yeah. You're outside that door. I'm not laughing. Calm down. I'm not gonna go to school today. Hey, Eddie, I found this in your room. Okay. Where'd this come from? The video store? Yeah, I know it came from the video store, but how did you buy it? With money. What money? The allowance you gave me? That money isn't enough to, to get you this kind I of game. I saved it up. Did you steal this? Maybe. Cody's killed a few animals. He's killed, um, he, when he was three, he microwaved a cat. And he's also killed a, a little small dog. My mom had a little Yorkshire Terrier and he, he said he flipped it and it broke its neck. And then he killed another cat by throwing, throwing uh, logs on it. He had no remorse for those animals. And she's afraid that he's going to go and and, and continue with the pattern and start killing people because he doesn't care. Most children are highly susceptible to rewards and praise on the one hand and punishment and so on on the other hand from their parents. But we figure with the high callous and emotional traits that while they're still very, very out there to get rewards and praise and everything they can get, that they're just less susceptible to any form of discipline. It just doesn't move them emotionally in any way. So these children are very, very hard to use a discipline strategy that actually changes their behaviour. Invariably, a conduct disordered person has been raised in a violent household. There's no impulse control. There's a lot of alcohol and drug use. And so the, the, the assumption is always that it's a learned behavior. They're modeling their parents and their caretakers. I guess I didn't know how to fight. After a while, I learned it. And everything turned around. Even now, he can become violent beating up kids at school and his sisters at home. Dima, but Dima! I give her socks and everything for my two hours. She don't want it. If they got him angry, he would uh, toss him around. He'd pick him up and throw him. He put Lana's head through a window one time. The neighbors have called me saying that they've seen him lifting him up by the back of the jacket and swinging them by their neck. Being away from home, I think it uh, makes things tougher for Cheryl. She's not only the mother, she's also having to take the place of the father as well. Hey, don't kick 
Punches me, hits me, kicks me, strangles me. shows is a strong genetic component. You take two kids who are adopted, you put them in different households, they both wind up diagnosed uh, with an antisocial disorder or a conduct disorder. So we know there's obviously a genetic component to it. So we like to, th the common sense knowledge is that there's probably a genetic predisposition and then it gets borne out when you have parents that are raising their children who are using basically antisocial techniques. What's your opinion on negative attention? I'd rather positive attention than negative attention. And what about not having any attention? I don't want to cry. So if you have a choice between negative attention and no attention at all, what choice do you make? Usually negative attention. That's better than nothing. So what have you what have you learned through your journey? You can't get better. And does that give you hope? Yeah. Wishful thinking that this can happen now, then. Yeah. So we're all going to get better in, 